<laughs> Hi everyone, Deep in the Voice Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it is time for a review of this new Mon Laferte record, Autopoietica. This is the newest full-length LP from Chilean, Mexican singer and songwriter Mon Laferte. Now on her ninth full-length LP, this album pretty much marks her uh, being at this whole music career thing for about two decades now. In the earlier stages of her career, she uh, toyed very much with pop music and very dramatic rock, but she would soon go on to embrace a much wider array of genres on records such as Mon Laferte Volume 1, as well as the following La Trenza, and her trajectory since then has been really interesting if you take the time to follow it along, as she really tries to work out this recipe that uh, respects her desire to have a pop appeal, but also experiment, as well as embrace the traditions of Latin music across the board, while also doing something new and definitive. And she has for sure gotten better at this over the years, while very much honing her vocal chops, cause some of her most fiery and passionate vocal performances yet uh, do turn up on her 2018 Norma and 2021 Sace records, which also brought big ranchero vibes on multiple tracks. And in that same year of 2021, as if uh, Laferte was uh, trying to prove just how difficult to define she is, she also dropped this uh, dreamy, mostly acoustic indie pop record. So a versatile artist to say the least, which brings us to autopoietica, which is a scientific term coined by a Chilean biologist that refers to, uh, I guess, a living system that sustains itself uh, by creating uh, itself or its own respective parts. Maybe an attempt by Laferte to explain her own personal artistic philosophy or maybe the approach she's taking uh, with this album. Either way, the record certainly sees her experimenting more, widening her genre palette as well as taking uh, some serious shots in the dark and getting a range of results. The opener, for example, brings this cinematic, eerie, string-kissed instrumental bed that sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie and underneath it we have these uh, kind of laid-back, chill, trip-hop style beats. Whole thing feels like an elevated Portishead track with a Latin twist. And if you weren't convinced enough of Laferte's love of 90s pop pioneers, the glitchy and soaring balladry on Mew Shiny is about as Bjork as you can be without going full post or vespertine. Meanwhile, Quarenta Imami pulls from a similar era but has a much bolder and daring series of contrasts as the song jumps from genre to genre in each section, which I get a lot more out of, honestly. The most memorable moments on this record, though, are the ones that feel like uh, Laferte is putting an interesting spin on some more traditional ideas. And mind you, that isn't always electrifying. There's which in many respects is kind of a standard sounding cumbia cut uh, in terms of its instrumental build, but uh, it's mysteriously slowed down, like it's uh, undergone some kind of TikTok remix or something, which just kind of makes the experience of it uh, a little bit tedious. I, I, I don't quite get it. There's much more enjoyment to be had on tracks that have these rich flashes of Latin jazz loaded with cool little edits or synthetic enhancements, maybe even some kind of strange or very dark lyricism, which makes tracks like Prende la Fuego as well as the Pepe Amantes Suicidas uh, feel as if they have a foot in the old and the foot in the new. There are also cuts on this thing that are strange and groovy and sort of futuristic like No Sad, which is a bassy, gritty, dark, whispery, psychotic reggaeton rendition that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the left-field bangers that you've heard Arca or Rosalia on in the past few years. There's also Casta Diva, where Laferte uh, really pushes her vocal abilities with this electronically enhanced spin on an amazing opera piece that I think ties up the many influences this record is pulling from, because you have this Bellini opera piece with grand and ornate instrumentation, as well as these huge choral vocals, then some amazing and dynamic lead vocals from Mon Laferte that are sometimes touched up with uh, these little chorus effects that are super harmonious but a little odd, make her singing feel almost inhuman at some points. Between the synths and orchestral bits throughout the track, there's something about this song that feels uh, simultaneously surreal and synthetic, organic and powerful. We get similar mixes of old and new but on much poppier cuts from the record, such as Metamorphosis, which have lots 
lots of synths and pumping beats. The title track scratches a kind of dark and futuristic itch too, though I will say I feel like this one uh, is a little underwhelming for a title song. It's not as decked out structurally or instrumentally as some of the best cuts here. The highlights do continue deeper into the track list though, like on Levitico uh, 29 or Pornocracia as well. Uh, the album stylistically and emotionally may be a little disjointed and all over the place. It's not the tightest or most consistently flowing album, but each track is typically approaching with a novel idea, great production, strong performances, great arrangements, uh, flavorful, zesty instrumentation. So the creativity of the record certainly does a lot to close the consistency gap, which is why this thing is one of the most fun and, again, daring albums to come out of the Latin scene that I've heard this year. Once more, it's a little all over the place and not every experiment pans out, and there are even a few cuts that are a tad bit derivative, I would say. But a majority of the songs on this record are still fantastic and also low loaded with mind-blowing moments vocally and uh, instrumentally, which I think really put Mon Laferte up there with any modern cutting-edge pop artist today, uh, regardless of origin. Feeling a light eight on this album, Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Mon Laferte, forever.